Hi everyone. We're going to make our own click beetles today to go with our story that we just read, The Very Clumsy Click Beetle. And there was a surprise at the end of this book when the click beetle clicked and flipped. And our click beetles are going to do the same thing. When we make them, they will click and flip. Woohoo! So, you might want to make more than one click beetle and they can have a little contest. Which click beetle can jump the farthest? How many times does the click beetle land on its back as opposed to standing on its feet? So you can have lots of fun with your little click beetle and it's very easy when you're done. You just press on the back, release, and it clicks and flips. Yay, click beetle. So, how do we make these wonderful little things? Well, we need to have some cardstock or light uh, cardboard, construction paper, you can use, but it rips so easily that you wouldn't be able to play with your click beetle. You need to have this type of a clothespin. I got mine, this whole pack of them, at the Dollar Tree. So you can go over there and get them because you can make lots of different things with clothespins, not just our little click beetles. So we need a clothespin, we need the cardstock, we need some markers, and we need little eyeballs. And you do need a glue gun for this, so you're going to have to have help from a grown-up on this one. And you'll need something to draw with and your scissors to cut out the click beetle body. So just as before, to make sure that your click beetle has a nice even shape, we're going to use a piece of our scrap paper to make our body. So it's the same, not lopsided. So what you wanna do is take a piece Hold it, and then you don't want to make it much bigger than this because it has to, as you see, it has to be able to fit nice size onto your clothespin so that it'll flip correctly. So using a clothespin as a guide so we don't make it too small and we don't make it too big, and then draw what will be head and then what will be the body. Kind of like this. Remember, there are thousands of different click beetles. So this is kind of up to you as to what shape your click beetle really looks like. There's no right way or wrong way. This is your click beetle. The only important thing is that you do make it so it will fit onto your clothespin. So open it up, see what we have. So here's my shape. I think, oh, that's it. It hides the clothespin. It looks like a pretty good shape. And so all I'm going to do at the bottom is fold it back up again and do a little one like this. So it kind of makes it look a little bit like the wings. 
So then all I have to do oops, is trace it onto my cardstock. And then this time you do want to trace it because you now point as soon as you have made the shape on your cardstock or your cardboard. you're going to color it. And you can use crayons or markers. And so here's my shape. Now I'm going to use any wild color that I want. I had my great nephew color one, and I colored the other one. So we had two different ones. And we decided instead of using the browns and the blacks, which a lot of the insects are, because that helps them camouflage onto the dirt. So other, in, other predators like birds and whatever, don't see them so easily, so they're not even for dinner. We're going to make one like Eric. Carl did. So we're going to make our head first. And remember, this is where the click beetle's real eyeballs are. And they're smaller than the ones that we're going to put on the back. So we just color the head. Let's see. You can kind of go over here now. And then we're going to make the fake eyes on the back. And do you remember what the story said? It said that these were to make prey, the animals that would eat beetles for dinner, like snakes and birds and whatever. Um, they're going to think that this is the real eyeball, the real part of the head. So they're going to go for that when it's really just a decoy. So it looks like those are two big eyeballs and really they're just spots on the back. So then you just color the rest of the body. And you know what? If you go out of the line, that's okay because you're going to cut it. So, while we're coloring this, it's, it told, I read some about the click beetles and it said that they're very shy. So you don't normally see them out and about walking around. And I think a lot of the ones that live near me are brown. So like I said, they blend in with the dirt, which makes it even harder for me to see them. So now I'm just gonna take another color and draw down so it would be like it's long, uh, where the wings go. And I'm gonna add little stripes on of mine. And so now I'm done coloring. I'm going to very carefully cut my click beetle out. And if this is good practice for fine motor skills. 
But if you're really young and you're not really good with the scissors yet, you might want to get some help. Now, a lot of times we use glue when we're doing our crafts, but because we're going to be playing with this and we need to make sure that it has a very, it sticks very well to the clothes pin, we're going to go ahead and use the hot glue today, which is why I said you need to have a grown up do this part of it for you. So we're going to very carefully put the dot here. And put on an eye, a real eye. Another little dot on the other real eye. Oops, it's slippery. So now we have our quick beetle. He's ready to go on to our clothespin. So instead of gluing him, what we do is we glue the clothespin. Let's see if it's going to click first. Yes. So we know that it will work. So we put hot glue along the clothespin like this. And then we center him and we put him right down onto the clothespin and press him into the hot glue. And then we do want to wait a second or so just to make sure that he's had a chance to set up. Oops. His eyeball fell off. Uh oh. And so now we have our third click beetle to join in our group so we can have a race with our little click beetles. Go have fun with your click beetles.